What I mean by strange loop is, here goes the first stab anyway, not a physical circuit, but an abstract loop in which, in the series of stages that constitute the cycling around, there is a shift from one level of abstraction or structure to another, which feels like an upwards movement in a hierarchy, and yet somehow the successive upwards shifts turn out to rise to a closed cycle. That is, despite one's sense of departing ever further from one's origin, one winds up to one's shock exactly where one had started out. In short, a strange loop is a paradoxical level crossing feedback loop. One of the most canonical, and I am sorry to say, how hackneyed, examples is M. C. Escher's lithograph, Drawing Hands, in which, depending on where one starts, one sees a right hand drawing a picture of a left hand. Nothing paradoxical yet, and yet the left hand turns out to be drawing the right hand all at once. It's a deep paradox. Here the abstract shift in levels would be the upward leap from drawn to drawer or equally from image to artist, the latter level being intuitively above, the former in more senses than one. To begin with, the drawer is always a sentient, mobile being, whereas a drawn is a frozen, immobile image, possibly of an inanimate object, possibly of an animate entity, but in any case, motionless. Secondly, whereas a drawer is three-dimensional, a drawn is two-dimensional. And thirdly, a drawer chooses what to draw, whereas a drawn has no say in the matter. In at least these three senses, then, the leap from a drawn to a drawer always has an upwards feel to it. As we've stated, there is by definition a sharp, clear upwards jump from any drawn image to its drawer. And yet, in drawing hands, this rule of upwardness has been sharply and cleanly violated. For each of the hands is hierarchically above the other. How is that possible? Well, the answer is obvious. The whole thing is merely a drawn image, merely a fantasy. But because it looks so real, because it sucks us so effectively into its paradoxical world, it fools us, at least briefly, into believing in its reality. And moreover, we delight in being taken in by the hoax, hence the picture's popularity. The abstract structure in drawing hands would constitute a perfect example of a genuine strange loop, were it not for that one little defect. What we think we see is not genuine. It's fake. To be sure, it's so impeccably drawn that we seem to be perceiving a full-fledged, true blue, card-carrying paradox. But this conviction arises in us only thanks to our having suspended our disbelief and mentally slipped into Escher's seductive world. We fall, at least momentarily, for an illusion. Is there, then, any genuine strange loop, a paradoxical structure that nonetheless undeniably belongs to the world we live in? Or are so-called strange loops always just fantasies that merely flirt with paradox, always just bewitching bubbles that inevitably pop when approached too closely? Well, what about our old friend video feedback as a candidate for strange loopiness? Unfortunately, although this modern phenomenon is very loopy and flirts with infinity, it has nothing in the least paradoxical to it. No more than does its simpler and older cousin, audio feedback. To be sure, if one points the TV camera straight at the screen or brings the microphone right up to the loudspeaker, one gets that strange feeling of playing with fire not only by violating a natural seeming hierarchy, but also by seeming to create a true infinite regress. But when one thinks about it, one realizes that there was no ironclad hierarchy to begin with, and that the suggested infinity is never reached. Then the bubble just pops. So although feedback loops of this sort are indisputably loops, and although they feel a bit strange, they are not members of the category strange loop. Fortunately, there do exist strange loops that are not illusions. I say fortunately because the thesis of this book is that we ourselves, not our bodies, but ourselves, are strange loops. And so if all strange loops were illusions, then we would all be illusions. And that would be a great shame. So it's fortunate that some strange loops exist in the real world. On the other hand, it is not a piece of cake to exhibit 
one for all to see. Strange loops are shy creatures, and they tend to avoid the light of day. The quintessential example of this phenomenon, in fact, was only discovered in 1930 by Kurt Gödel, and he found it lurking in, of all places, the gloomy, austere, supposedly paradox-proof castle of Bertrand Russell's theory of types. What was a 24-year-old Austrian logician doing, snooping about in this harsh and forbidding British citadel? He was fascinated by paradoxes, and although they knew they had supposedly been driven out by Russell and Whitehead, he nonetheless intuited that there was something in the extremely rich and flexible nature of numbers that had a propensity to let paradox bloom even in the most and seeming of desert or the most sterilized of granite places. Girdle's suspicions had been aroused by a recent plethora of paradoxes dealing with numbers in curious new ways, and he felt convinced that there was something profound about these tricky games, even though some people claimed to have ways of diffusing them.